Amen. Boy, these kids, you know, they, they come out of that thing and that little Corinne challenging me. She gets home from children's church. She goes, oh, yeah, Paul, guess what? And she shares this psalm. I'm going, they're getting the word at that level, and that word is in them. Because Corinne told me the other day, she says, Pawsey, we have to guard our tongue. I said, oh, yeah, you must be in James. <laughs> said, yeah. Yeah. But they the other day about their tongue, they speak in life in children's church. Amen? Amen. Come on, you start them off as a child, train them. It's easier to train a tree this big than a, than a tree this big. Amen? Amen? A little bush this big or oak. You got to cut down the oak. Amen? Amen? Amen. Bless the word today. Bless your name. Bless the, all the guests here today. Um, Love being here this morning. Uh, we're in a series in February. It's called Fear is Not My Future. We're talking about there's so much uncertainty in 2023. That's all we hear. But also we hear that when things happen, it's going to be big. Because why? Well, I believe God does big things. Amen? The bottom line is that you can't fear about tomorrow because I know who holds tomorrow. And guess what? He holds my hand. Amen? So we don't have to fear. But today, we're going to do a message today about saying goodbye. Ooh, goodbye. I'm going to teach you how to say goodbye without looking back. There's a lot of things that we've been coming at, a lot of Egyptians, we call them, that are coming at you. And you just got to wave them goodbye and say goodbye. But I'm not looking back because God has a plan for me. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11, last week, for I know the plans. For, isn't it amazing that he, for I know the plans I have for you, yeah. declares the Lord. You got to read that. That's bold when somebody says, hey, guess what? I know the plans I have for you, buddy. And guess what? You can take it to the bank because I'm taking, I'm taking care of it. You can take it to the bank and it won't bounce. Your checking account might bounce, but, that, but his bank account won't bounce. He said, I have the plans I have for you. Plans to give you what? Not to harm you, but to plan to give you a future, a hope, a future and a hope. A hope and a future. Yeah, we got it back. Huh? Stay right. You got to get it together. But on the line is this. Two things come, hope and future. Hope is the assurance. See, we, 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 you, you may grieve at times, but you don't grieve without hope. Things aren't going right. We hurt, we grieve, but guess what? We still have hope. But hope is the assurance of that what he said will come to pass. It's called his promises. And why? I've, got, I've, I've, I've gotten to this and I've realized in this message that God is more concerned about your future than you are. He, I, I, you may, he's more concerned about your future. Why is God concerned your future? Because the rest of your life is your future. Tomorrow is your future. So he is more concerned about the rest of your life, not what you are, but what you can be. Amen? So, we go on a series right here today, and I looked at this chapter. There's a book of Exodus, chapter 14. It's a familiar thing that you find in the Red Sea. I'm not talking about the Red Sea. It's, it's a caption in there about the Red Sea. And it says this, that at the Red, they were about, the, the, the Israelites were about to cross over into a new transition. And I didn't know this, but all these people, these um, like Chuck Pierce and different people, they speak in these prophetic words. They say February is the year of the month of transition. I didn't even know that. I kept on getting this word in my spirit at the gym. Transition. Transitioning out. New horizon. I kept on getting this word. And what it was saying was the Egypt, the Israelites were about to transition out of one era into a new era. It's called the new horizon. You know what a new horizon is? It's when you can, the furthest thing that you can see with your eyes, and you can see where the, where the sun the, it's, touches land at night. When, when the sun goes down, the furthest thing you see, when, it, when the sky and the sun come down, where you actually see the sun touch land, that's horizon. And God, that's the horizon when God, and this is it. It's how far you can see 
and how far you can see is where he wants to take you. But you have to see. You have to see it. They were out to go into a new place. They were transitioning. They were moving out of one era into a new, a new thing, but they didn't understand all. They didn't understand the abundance they were about to walk into. But God had to do a mindset before they left. God had to do something here because your battle begins right here. And victory and defeat are one in the mind. Victory or defeat, you can be defeated for a football game before you start when you see the size of the people. Oh, well, we did. Get the bus warming up. Guess what? You're going down. Amen? You can tell. You, people are defeated in their face before they even walk into a place. You can see they were defeated at the wall of Jericho before they even knew it, but yet they didn't know the, that the wall was coming down. They were defeated, but they saw a wall, but they were already defeated because they saw fear. Because why? The same God that opened up the Red Sea is coming after us. Amen? Amen? And, they, and they, they were about to make this exodus, an exit out. They were exiting out of the past. It's called Egypt. The world, before you were saved, you were, you were, you were, they were about to exit out Egypt. And what Egypt represented, Egypt represented bondage. They were bound by a taskmaster who told them what to do. And the taskmaster was a hard taskmaster. And what it was is that it kept them into a place of slavery, a mindset that they could only see a crumb when God has so much more, but they were told over and over and over, all you are worthy and have of is the crumb, and after somebody speaks it over and over in your life, you start to believe, that's all I'm worthy of is a crumb, when God says, no, I got a filet man, you're waiting over here, but somebody told you a crumb was waiting for you. Amen. They were transitioning out. Listen, they could see, listen, they could see the land of milk and honey. They were at the foot of the Red Sea. They could see the land of milk and honey. They could see a new season from not enough to more than enough. Gra grab this. They could see a season of not having enough to a season of more than enough. They could see a harvest of joy. Over the years of the sea of, of, of seas of tears, they could see it. But they had to step over that threshold. But guess what? Anytime you want to go forward with God, there will always be a red sea in your way asking, do you want to cross or not? There will always be something in front of you, and it's going to stop you. It's called the Red Sea. And this is what it is. The Red Sea is between you and your horizon. The Red Sea was in front of them, but the past was behind them. It was called the Egyptians. And your past will always call you to come back because they don't want to let you to step into a new future. It's called the Egyptians. You know, in the story, when they went out of Egypt, the taskmaster said, hey, you know what? I want them back. I want them. The, the, the enemy don't want you free. I mean, the enemy wants you bound. They said, I don't want you saved. What they, what they did? Pharaoh said, send my best after them. He did. He sent his very best after them because he wanted them not to cross because if he knew their cross, they're going into a new horizon. Once they cross, they may never come back. Yeah. Come on. Amen. It's always there in front of you. It's always there. But you know what? You hear the voice calling you, but you know what? I hear the door. I, I, with the song years ago, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. You do, too many times you open the door. Keep the door shut in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. But listen, they thought they were trapped. They said, hey, their God brought them to a place. They got a mountain this side and the rest of here they are. They trapped. But let me tell you something. It's called the book of Exodus because my God is the book of, my God is a God of exits. He can exit you out of anything. Yes. I'm telling you, you're not trapped. Amen. If he's the God of exit, guess what? You're not trapped. What? He'll make a way 
Where there is no way. Come on. How many times have y'all seen wing maker? Y'all sing it so much. Y'all know he's a way maker. What? Miracle worker. Promise keeper. A light in the darkness. Yeah. Well, he's a way maker. But I'm going to let you know today. I'm going to get a word for you today. But God is a God of order. But before you can say hello to a new season, he gave them a goodbye to another. You, got, you just missed that. <laughs> before he can say, you can say hello to a new season, he gave them a goodbye to the old season. It's in the word of God. I'm going to show you. I read this thing so many times. The Israelites were standing at the edge. They were saying, wasn't there enough graves? Wasn't there enough graves in Egypt that you brought us out here to die? We were happy with the garlic bread and the loaves and all the, and the onion mums. We were happy with all that. Why did you take us out here? You see, the, uh, the enemy will call you. Go, oh, why did we leave? Why did I get involved in that church? Oh, why did I do? Oh, we were happy. We were happy. You were in bondage for 400 years. What you were happy about? You were bound. You were bound by addictions. What do you want to go back for? The enemy as well say, hey, come back. They were bound to play. And listen, here's, here's the word. Look at Exodus 14, 13. They were at the threshold. And look what Moses said. And Moses spoke to the people, fear not. So you have to calm fear. The first thing you have to do is you have to calm fear. Fear is loud. It's negative. It was scream. It's a phobia. It screamed. He said, fear not. Stand firm and watch God do his work. Yeah. Woo! Come on. You want to see God move? Don't be afraid. Stand firm and watch him move. Don't try to make it happen. That's a word for somebody. Don't try to make it happen. For the work of salvation is for you today. Now here it is. Take a good look. Say it with me. Take a good look. Take a good look. At, the At the Egyptians. For today. Say for today. For today. You are never going to see them ever again. <laughs> Come on. You got to grab that. He got to grab Listen. You're, listen. What you see in today, take a good look. You want to get a Polaroid, get a good shot of it. Because the, what you see today, you're not going to see tomorrow. Amen. Here's a word today. Before God can give you hello to a new season, he's got to give you a bye. So I'm telling you is this. Today is not your season to say hello. Today is your season to say goodbye. Amen. Come on, you're with me this morning. You're going to say goodbye this morning in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet this morning. We're going to say goodbye to some things. Oh. Hello. Hello. Peace. Hello. Come on. Say goodbye fear. Come on, do this with me. Do this. Come on, do this with me. Come on, come on, do this with me. Well, do, don't look back. Goodbye. goodbye. Fear. Goodbye fear. Come on, just look back. Say goodbye. Give me a goodbye, bro. Come on, come on. Come on. So goodbye, fear. Come on. Can you come take 30 seconds? Come on, let's listen. And begin to give an exit to depression. Come on, give an exit. Come on, depression, so sickness. Been bothering, whatever's been bothering you. Come on. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. Come on, say goodbye. Goodbye. Say goodbye. 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 I got time for you. I got time for you. Goodbye. Come on. Come on. Give me a goodbye. Give me a goodbye, boy. Give me a goodbye. No, this way. Give me a goodbye. 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 So goodbye, Shane. Goodbye, Shane. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, oh. oh, come on. Goodbye. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. It's a new horizon. So goodbye, Goodbye, Shane. Goodbye. Come on, goodbye. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. come on. I ain't got time for you. I got a little horizon. Woo, come on. It's a new horizon. Goodbye. 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 You see, before God can introduce you to hello, you've got to say goodbye. 
You can sit back down. You're going to be doing calisthenics today. You, you should have wore gym clothes today. You missed it. Amen. Why are we doing this, Pastor? Why? Psalms 68.1 says this. For let God arise. Get in your spirit. Awaken your spirit. There's a lion inside of you. Get in your spirit. Let God arise. And his enemies be scattered. Come on. Let God arise. And his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. And his enemies be scattered. I don't care how many men. Let God arise because you and God are a majority. I don't care how many out there. If you and God are together, then guess what? You're a majority. And you can say this. When you see those things come at you, you say this. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Whew, come on. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. I'm going to be talking about a couple of things today. I'm going to be talking about depression right now. I'm talking about overcoming depression right now. You say, man, Pastor, I can, it's, it's a spirit that is so real, that hovers so thick. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to give you some word here today about this in my spirit because it says it's a state of lowliness in spirit, a disorder. It's not right. It's a disorder. It means it's out of order. Something's out of order. Yeah. It's a disorder that what? Makes marked by what? Here's the signs. Sadness, sad and hopelessness. Amen? And you say, man, wait. How? It's a disorder. It's, listen, here we understand this. This type, look, fears and these types of things, let me say, sometimes it's a misunderstanding of who God is and his promises. Somehow or another, things got twisted. It's called our thinking. Our thinking somehow or another got twisted, and it becomes a disorder, meaning that things are not right. It's not in order. But listen, it can happen to anyone. Don't dare judge anybody by the cover. I'm going to tell you straight up. Oh, this is, I got this in the gym the other morning. I'm, I'm ping, boom. And I looked at it, and there was a story, it's not on the script. There's a story in, in, in 1 Kings about Elijah. Sometimes you will get hit with something after a great victory. After a breakthrough or something, you will, it's called being blindsided. You understand? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I, you know, it just came out of nowhere. He was blindsided by a threat when somebody, words, Words have weight. And the person didn't say it. The person sent a messenger to Elijah saying that tomorrow you're going to find yourself as good as dead, Elijah. Here it is. Here's how things go. It, it looks, this thing looks for an open door to travel through. The door of your heart. Once it can enter in, it wants to take over. Amen. It's a spirit. Say it's a spirit. Spirit. Okay, marked by different things, sadness, hopelessness. And let me tell you, let's go on with it. So he opened this door because he found himself looking inward instead of outward. It went this way, okay? And what happens is he heard this and he found himself alone. Mm -mm -mm. That's a bad place to be by yourself when you're not thinking straight. Yeah. Let me not go to church. Let me do it. Honey, maybe you should have ran to church. Right. Yeah. Everything, you heard the wrong voice. I think I'm going to stay home and just chill out and wait for the game tonight to come on. Yeah, when the game's over, what happens? Maybe you could have came to church today and got set free. Who knows? You know, if the atmosphere is right, I'm just being honest with you. And he heard the voice. Everybody hears a voice. And he heard the voice. And he said to himself, he's heard the voice. And he found himself sitting under a broom tree. What is that? A broom tree only has shade for one person. It's called isolation. Let me isolate you from the body of Christ that would probably give you hope. Let me, let me disconnect you from a life, a Bible study on Wednesday night. I'll just stay home and just watch... Uh, Lifetime. Man, you know what's going to happen. They all, they all, 
They meet each other, they follow up, and everybody gets married. Come on, you know the story. It's the same story over and over. That's Hallmark. Hallmark, whatever it's called. I don't even watch that thing, man. I'm so disgusted with it. <laughs> Nobody has problems on that show. Get out of my world. Everybody lives happily ever after. It's like the Brady Bunch. Everything's, listen, this is not the Brady Bunch, people. Everything doesn't get healed in 30 minutes. Come on. That's the Brady Bunch. No matter what happened, at the end, Alice came out and they always had dinner. What kind of world you live in, man? That's not the real world. And he got on the thing, a broom tree, and listen, and this is what he said. It opened, listen, that's why you got to catch it, man. Because it opened the door to hopelessness. That's where it's headed. That's the place that's going. Because he said this with his own words. He looked up and he prayed, listen, he prayed to God that God would take him out. I've learned this. When you're under a broom tree, I got to get this out of my head. I can't go further and do Elvis. It took me a week to get Elvis out of my brain. You find yourself on Lonely Street. No, I'm not going to do Elvis. I did enough shaking this week. I'll tell you, my, my, hips, my hips are messed up. I ain't doing no more shaking. Can't do I'm not going to do it. I want to do it, but I'm not going to do it. He found himself on Lonely Street. That's a bad place to be because you're by yourself. And the enemy loves to be by yourself because he's a bully. And he wants to get you all alone so he can mess up your head with a false belief system. This is Holy Ghost, man. He, will, he wants to go in, exchange truth for a lie, and he's going to do it in a way that you might start believing it. And then you open the door to your heart and mind because he's looking for the power of agreement. The power of agreement is powerful, good or bad. Okay? And he prayed, and he went down to a place of like heartbreak hotel. That's the bottom line. I'm not going to do it. I promised. I told myself I wasn't going to do it. Oh, I'm telling you what. Oh, no, 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 Jesus' name. No. You know, thank you very much. But he did. But he prayed. And let me tell you something. When people are in this state, hear me out. Here's, what, here's, the, here's a word for the church today. When people are in that state, do not judge them. No. Do not judge them because they're not thinking in their right mind. And just because they don't think like you and cookie cut it and all of the above, because it doesn't like you, don't judge them. Because why? Because man looks at the outward and God looks at the heart. Amen. We forgot that scripture. We forgot that a long time ago. Man looks at the outward, but God looks at the heart. And well, my whole point is this. The other day, I had to go do a funeral for a stillborn. I never did that in 25 years. I was really, didn't know what to say. I did over 100, over 100 and something funerals, but I never did this. And the Lord said, you need to go over there because you need to bring that family hope because they just, they just crossed over into the enemy of hopelessness. I didn't know what to say. I said, but Holy Ghost, he said, if you have to use words, if you have to, use words. You know what I did? I hugged and cried. Because why? I needed to call upon the, God, the, 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 the Father of compassion, yeah. the comforter, which is Christ. Yeah. And brother, I cried my eyes out with those people. You know what? I did it. You know why? If, you, if I didn't bring him hope, then who was? Then who was? Right. Who was going to bring him? You just can't pass on Sunday morning. Who, no, the real world's out there. And had to go do this, but you had to. Because who was going to bring hope and hopelessness? He prayed, that we, he prayed that he would die. There was a root thing here. There's a root. There was a door that was open. In the prayer, there's a door that was open that we allowed. And you have to go ask God, I don't understand it, but go back to that place. And if you don't, just repent. You got to. He told Elijah, what are you doing here? He asked Elijah, what are you doing here? 
And he answered back, oh, I don't know, I prayed I would die, blah, blah, blah. And I said, wait a minute. Listen, hear me out. If you don't get out of a broom tree, there's a cave waiting for you. The, the word of God says he then he went into a cave. He went deeper in the darkness. But you know what? In that cave, God knew where he was at. God knows where you're at in your lowest state. He knows where you're at, man. He knows where. And he called out Elijah again. He didn't rebuke him. He said, get your act together. What's your problem? He said, what are you doing here? He said, come on out. That's why you need to hear a voice and you need to hear people. You need to get connected around people that will tell you in your state, hey, brother, that ain't God's plan. Get out of that. Get out of that, brother. Get out of that right now. You're headed in darkness. Get out, man. Get out of that. Amen? Amen. Well, how do you do that? How, how, you know, how do you do it? Well, I know one thing. I I've I've, I've, I've went through these times. I had it. You have to turn to something. People turn to alcohol. Turn to this. Turn to that. But I hear this. If you want to get out of state, turn to God's word. Why? You have to get the word in you to replace the lies that are bringing now. You have to get the word in you so you can get the lies out of you. That was Holy Ghost. Hmm? The word. The word works. David said this, Psalms 119. Your word is a light a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word will get you out of darkness because the word becomes a path. But you know what? You've got to walk it out. Amen? It's a lamp to my feet. It's a lamp. The word is light. People will do everything but the word. Let me go watch, let me go watch episode of, uh, of 48, of first 48, where you're going to kill. No, get out of that, man. Get, get, get out of that. Get your mind, get, get your mind back, get your mind on the word again because the word is the only thing that's going to penetrate the darkness. Amen. Amen. Psalms 119 says, What? Oh, how I love, how I love your word. What he says, I meditate on it all day long. You've got to get it in your spirit. Why? You just can't read it. You've got to ask God, the Holy Spirit, let it go down deep in my spirit because deep cries out on the deep. So Lord, let it not just get here. Let it not get here. Let it go all the way down to my feet and shake this cage. Amen. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me. You make me wiser than in my enemies. Come on. I have more insight then all the teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I tell people, you have to meditate, but you have to apply it. Oh, you have to take it off the page and actually apply it to your situation. It's called application. In other words, you, I've learned this. You have to exercise your faith. Oh, my God. You just can't go to the gym and drink coffee. I did that for a year. I've actually gained weight going to the gym. <laughs> and then somebody told me, hey, you've got to get on that treadmill. That's a beast. So the other day, I did about an hour and something on that treadmill. I took my towel. I said, you beast, I got your name now. And the people thought I was crazy in there. I don't care. I had to tame that thing. Huh? Well, hear me out. The word is powerful. Amen? You got to meditate on it. Why I got to meditate on it? Because what? That's what it. Why? What comes out of your mouth? What goes in your mind comes out of your mouth. What goes in your mind comes out of your mouth. Say that with me. What goes in your mind comes out of my mouth. That's where the battle begins. That's where the battle begins. Amen. It's not my future. It's not my future. Amen. Amen. Don't let. Listen. Don't let your worry, your fears. Your things get louder than your worship. Yes, Lord. The very thing that will get you out of is your worship. Amen? Amen? Because God is listening to a response. Put it on. It's called gratitude. Did you realize that gratitude and depression kill it? Come on. Gratitude and depression can't live in the mind at the same time. So what you're going to do right now? 
I think you better stand up right now. I think you better stand up. Come on. Ah, come on. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. What? You got to sing hallelujah, brother, innit? Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Ask me, ask me what? Hallelujah, Lord. I want to. Uh huh, yes, Lord. Yeah. See, that's what you got to cry for. I got a lot of fighting. Don't you get shy on me. Why? Because you have a line inside of you. Come on, my soul. But don't you get down on me. Lift up your voice. Come on. Because you got a lion. Come on. You got to get the lion out. Let the lion roar. Let the lion roar. And praise the. What you going to do right now? You're going to do it. You're going to praise him. Come on, my soul. Don't you get. Come on. Come on. Oh, boy. Who got a lion inside of my soul? Get up and praise the Lord. Yeah, come on. For <sighs> my soul, don't you get shy on me. Where's the lion at? Get up and pray. You gotta get up and praise the Lord. Even when you don't feel like it. You gotta get up and praise him anyway. Because why? The lion inside of you has to be awoken. And in the response, he says, Come out of darkness. Because why? There's a lion. The name of the tribe of Judah. And his name is Jesus. And he says, Get up. Or wake up your spirit. Why? There's a lion inside of you. But you've been listening to a lion lion. And the word of God says that there's a lion inside of you. But the word says this. Don't just hear the word. Obey the word and do it. Amen. In other words, you know what you got to do. Go do it. Basically, it says this. You know what the right thing to do. Stop talking about it. Stop thinking about it. Just go out and do it. Say amen. 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 Listen, it's time, it's time that you get off a depression drive and get on the dream big drive. It's time to get off depression drive. Why? Here's a word in my spirit today. Are you sick and tired of the years you've been exchanging punches with the devil? Yeah. Well, that's, have you been on a punching a 15 round fight with the devil when the cross has already defeated him? Yeah. So here's a word that got my spirit today. If you believe in transitions coming, he's going to rattle your cage. I said, Lord, Rattle your cage and set them free. And the Lord said today, I'm talking like today, say today. today. I'm about to rattle your cage and I'm about to set you free. But you better allow me to shake your cage. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. Shall I receive that? Yeah. Woo. Come on. Amen. Well, how about, how, about another, how about another friend that hangs around depression? How about shame? You can go to your feet. All right, we got it. We good. You're good. Shame. Say, you can be seated. Shame. Shame. Oh, my God. Shame. Shame. What the word say about shame? A, pit of, a painful emotion caused by a consciousness of guilt that brings you humiliation, disgrace, and reproach. Say reproach. reproach. Reproach is a stigma, a mark. It wants to leave you a brain, a stigma. Okay? But listen, in the garden, God never gave shame to Adam and Eve. The word in Genesis says this. Adam and Eve, they were both naked, and they felt no shame. You see, they felt no shame. But when we open the door to things, guess what? Shames come with it. And the word of God says, when they were shamed, guess what they did? They hid. They hid because they felt unacceptable. And the church today makes people feel unacceptable. And unworthy. 
you know what? The cross made you worthy, and the cross made you acceptable. So I want to say amen. Amen? amen? And look what he says in Genesis uh, 3. And, and the man and the woman, they said to each other, they heard the Lord coming, and they were in the garden, and they hid from the Lord among the trees in the garden. They hid. But the Lord, God, called the man, where, where are you? It wasn't like he didn't know where they were at. They no longer reflected the image that he was made out of. Because he was made, in, the man was made in his image. So his image was tarnished. Shame makes you feel tarnished. Come on, it's Holy Ghost, bro. And you can, you can listen to that beast all day long. And it makes you feel unworthy. It makes you feel like I don't belong. And the word says, and then what? And then, and then he answered, I heard, this, I, heard you, I, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid. It brings fear. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And that's shame. God didn't tell him that. Who told him that? The voice. So I hid. Hear me out. Adam, he felt fear, and then he felt less than. Bro, this is hope. He felt fear. Then he felt less than, meaning that he felt that he was not worthy. He was not good enough to make the cut. Boy, am I, am I, am I talking today? I'm, 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 he, he felt this. He hid because he believed a false belief system. He believed a false belief. And that's, if the enemy can make you believe a false belief system, it's a belief. And he hid. And he felt, what's it with it? He felt like he was a failure. But yet God did not see him that way. Amen. We come to a place where we feel not good enough. It's called reproach. But regardless of reproach, it can never take away your salvation. You didn't just lose your salvation. Which you did, you lost it? It was here one day, you lost it. I have somewhere over here. It's, I don't know, I put it somewhere. Listen, reproach gives you a stigma, but it doesn't change your salvation. You see, and here's why I gotta share a little word here. I'm closing this thing out. You have to watch how you speak to your children about shame. We say, shame on you for doing that. And we speak life and death over the power of the tongue. What I tell is this. Learn to tell your kid, hey, I'm disappointed in you, but you're still my kid. Somebody better say amen. I'm disappointed in the situation, but you're still my kid. Why? Shame wants you to lose your identity of who you are. And we have identity crisis in America. We don't know who you are, right? What shame speaks to our identity and a question of not who we are, but rather what we've done. I'm letting you know this. Even as parents, when your kids mess up big time, you want to say this, and we've said it many a times. Where did we go wrong? How many times have you said that? I lost track. We looked at each other and going, this is not my child. I said, no, it is our child. He said, first thing, this is not my kid. I realized, no, it's my kid. <laughs> but here's my whole point. As parents, sometimes you feel shame because your kid didn't do exactly like you had planned they thought they would do. He didn't make the cut. So he feels unworthy. And you as parents today, you can bring life or death to a situation. He said, I didn't like the way it turned out, but I think God, I believe God can do something. You see, we cannot, we cannot project 
a new season when it was still speaking language of an old season. Yes, I'm disappointed in you, but I still love you. Makes a big difference. I don't understand it all, baby. I don't know how it got here. But listen, the first thing we did was, man, we pastors, what the church is going to say? We got a daughter going out left field. What are they going to say to us? I hope they would say, brother, we need to pray for you instead of rebuking you. I hope they need to tell you that they love you instead of reproach and make a stigma on your life and go, oh my God, that's that pastor who can't get his act together. His kid's out in left field. Maybe you need a little bit of mercy and grace on your life because you're not showing up right now. Amen? I don't know what I, This is just Holy Ghost right now. Because why? You and I cannot go into a future holding shame from the past. I'm going to close out with this, Joshua 5. Joshua could not go into the promise because he had a stigma of the past was holding him. And the Lord knew that in order for Joshua to say hello, he had to say goodbye. It was called reproach, shame. And the Lord said to Joshua, say today, today, now, today, I rolled away the reproach of Egypt. I rolled away the reproach of the past, the stigma, the, pe the things that people talk to you about, the years that you were out in left field, and that's how they regular, that's a stigma. You were in school, they still call you the same person. I graduated 40 years ago. I grew up, man. Give it a break. See? And we keep on telling people of what they were instead of keeping what they can be. We have to see what the God can see. And he said, today I roll away the stigma of the past because I'm taking you into a new horizon where the stigma can no longer get you. Come on. I want you to stand on your feet this morning. Wait, wow. It's time to get off. It's time to get off a of shame street and get on the highway of favor. Come on. Say, Hi, what? There's a thing called the highway of favor. Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, lift up your hand this morning. Say, Lord. I'm exchanging, I'm exchanging this street, this shame street for the freeway of favor. The, free, the, the, the freeway of favor. Favor is what? Opposite of reproach. Favor gives you, favor gives you what God, favor gives you what you need. So Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I speak that over your life right now in the name of Jesus, that Lord, I, God is telling me goodbye. Say goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye to shame, guilt, humiliation. Hello, favor. Hello, favor. Hello, favor. Hello, favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, baby, amen. Amen. Today was your day of goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Next two weeks, I'm going to tell you where you're going to. It's called hello. Hello to peace. Yeah. Hello to joy. Yeah. Hello to love. Yeah. Hello to strength. Yeah. Hello to hope. Hello to a new horizon. Do you believe it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you for the word today. I thank you for your spirit today. I thank you that today is a day of goodbye. I'm going home and saying, you know what? Goodbye. Goodbye depression, goodbye anxiety, goodbye this, goodbye, hello peace, hello joy, hello. Because if God wants you to give you a good hello, you got to say a goodbye. Amen. Kiss your goodbye in Jesus' name. Say amen. amen. Kiss your goodbye.